Summary of Utopia by Sir Thomas More At the beginning of the novel Utopia, the main character, Thomas More, is in the Netherlands. He is there to fulfill his role as an ambassador, which King Henry VIII of England has sent to the Netherlands in order to discuss the English wool trade. More then goes to Antwerp, where he lives and makes friends with Peter Giles, a good and smart person from that city. Moore runs into Giles on his way home from church one day. Giles is talking to an old man named Raphael Hithliday. Moore, Giles, and Hithliday walk to Moore's house together. They have a long conversation in his yard. We learn that Hithliday floated around the world with the famous explorer Amerigo Vespucci. He even went to the New World by going through Asia. Even better, it was in the New World that he met the Utopians. The Utopians are an island people who live in what Hithliday believes is the world's best-run democracy. Moore and Giles think Hithliday is so smart that they want him to become a counselor for a prince. But Hithliday isn't sure if he should. He thinks that princes are too interested in war and chivalry to listen to wisdom, and he thinks that his fellow advisors would be proud and dishonest. As an example, Hithliday talks about a dinner he had years ago in England at Cardinal John Morton's table. There, a lawyer praised England for treating thieves so harshly, by putting them to death. In response, Hithliday says that the sentence is too harsh for the crime and that England should change the social conditions that make thieves want to break in the first place instead of killing them. In particular, he says that the lower classes are idle because of the pride and greed of aristocrats and landlords. He says that being idle leads to poverty and suffering. Instead, Hithliday says that thieves should be made to work as a punishment. This would keep them from killing people and also help the public. Everyone at the table doesn't agree with Hithliday's ideas until Cardinal Morton does. This makes it look like the men around the Cardinal are just trying to make him look good. At the end of the story, Moore says that he still thinks Hithliday would do great things for his country if he were to be a prince's advisor. Hithliday doesn't agree. He imagines helping a French king like Charles VIII or Louis VII build an empire through wars of conquest. What would happen if Hithliday told the king to stop fighting and focus on his problems at home? Moore agrees that this kind of advice would not be welcomed by the king. Hithliday then says that as an advisor, he would have to agree with bad laws and rules or go crazy. He thinks that a country with private money or property can never be fairly ruled. Then Hithliday starts to talk about Utopia. Moore asks Hithliday to give a very detailed account of the island. All of the towns are pretty much the same, they are all prosperous and well-planned, but Amorot is the capital because it is in the middle of everything. Utopian society is based on the idea that people in Utopia don't own anything individually and instead share everything their country has, from land and homes to bread and wine. There is also no money in Utopia, in fact, the people there hate gold because it's useless. Hithliday says that without private property, people don't grow their pride as much as they grow their country, which is like a family or household that is doing well. The people of Utopia live together in patriarchal families of at least 10 and no more than 16 people, not counting children. Every person in Utopia works at least 6 hours a day at farming and at least one other craft. The people in Utopia don't have to work, eat, or sleep. They can do whatever they want with their free time. In Utopia, there aren't many rules, and lawyers aren't allowed in the Commonwealth because they find too many ways to break the law. Being pushed into slavery is the only crime with a set punishment. Someone who commits adultery once is put to death, and someone who does it twice is put to slavery. The Utopians are supervised and helped in their work by judges called Philarchs, who are chosen by the people. The Archphilarchs, Prince, and Philarchs often get together to talk about the state of the Commonwealth and any problems that may come up with the ordinary people, though these problems don't happen very often. Utopians are protected from tyranny, political corruption, and hasty decisions by laws. For example, magistrates who hold meetings about the Commonwealth outside of the council or the place of the general election are put to death. The judges, on the other hand, love their people and are fair and kind. On top of the magistracy, 
slavery may be the most defining social trait in utopia. People from utopia who have committed heinous offenses are forced to work as slaves. The country also pays other countries for their criminals, but only those who have already been sentenced to death. They are then brought back to utopia to work as slaves. The utopians don't want to go to war, but when they have to, they hire soldiers to fight for them so that their own people don't have to die. When they go to war, the utopians are smart and fight dirty, doing whatever they can to save lives and end the conflict fast. In terms of moral theory, the utopians are most interested in finding ways for people to be happy. Some people think that happiness is the most important thing in life, and that's what they are. The utopians say that morality is living in a way that is in line with nature. We follow nature by paying attention to what our reason says is right and wrong. Reason also leads us to love the holy. For utopians, the best things in life are doing good things and following their morals. The utopians' outlook is based on religious ideas. They believe that the soul lives forever and that God wants it to be happy. They also believe that good deeds are rewarded in the future and bad deeds are punished. People serve different gods all over the island and even in the same city. These gods can be anything from the sun to famous people from the past. In Utopia, atheism is criticized but not punished, and so are heresies like the idea that animal souls live forever. The only people who are sent away or forced to work are those who attack other religions and try to force others to agree with them. Everyone goes to the same churches to worship, and the priests are chosen by secret vote to lead the community spiritually. After Hithliday finishes talking about Utopia, Moore thinks to himself that many of the rules and laws that exist in Utopia don't make sense, even when it comes to the main idea behind their laws, like how everyone owns resources and there is no money. But Moore doesn't want to upset Hithliday by not agreeing with what he says. Moore doesn't always agree with Hithliday, but he does say that he wants many of the things that Hithliday thinks of as Utopia to come true in the towns of Europe. But he doesn't dare hope as much, because that would be too much. About the author. Thomas More grew up in London. As a child, Thomas went to St. Anthony's School, which was one of the best schools of its time. From 1490 to 1492, he worked as a family page for the Archbishop of Canterbury. More went to Oxford when he was 19 years old and learned Greek there. He left in 1499 to study law in London. He also started self-mortification around this time. As a very serious Catholic, he did things like wear a hair shirt, sleep on a log, whip himself, and so on. Moore went to Parliament when he was 21 years old and was soon named the Undersheriff of London. He was successful in the House of Commons in 1503 when he fought against King Henry VI's plan to give him money to help pay for his daughter Margaret's dowry. This made the king angry, and Moore thought about leaving England and becoming a monk because of it. But he decided to stay in London to improve his political and legal career, and King Henry VII died a few years later. Moore started writing Utopia in Latin in 1515. It wasn't his first book, but it is most certainly what made him famous as a writer. In 1521, Moore was made a knight during the rule of Henry VIII. In 1529, he was named Supreme Court Lord. He used this power to violently fight against the English Protestant Reformation. He even tortured and burned at the stake Protestants who were thought to be sinners. But around this time, Henry VIII decided to end his first marriage to Catherine of Aragon, which went against Catholic teaching, in order to have a child to inherit the throne. The king made the English clergy swear loyalty to him, not the Pope, as the supreme head of the Church of England in 1531. But Moore stayed true to the Pope and fought against the king's split from Catherine. While he did step down as Chancellor in 1532, he not before making another king angry. Moore was found guilty of high treason in 1535. On July 6, that year, he was put to death by being cut off at the head. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.